after COVID-19, freelance remote jobs really boom because people came and understood that the fact that you can actually work with somebody without having to have a physical meetup with them. Now with this, the rise of the freelance space really grow. It was always there, but with COVID-19, it grow exponentially. Upwork is one of the most important places for people when you are a freelance jobs. Either you are a virtual assistant, I'm on a fanya content writing, I'm on a fanya tech jobs, any of these jobs is as a fanya remotely with a freelance person, ziko kwa Upwork. It offers a very, very unique opportunity to say when you are data science, data analytics, software development, software engineering, and the tech field. What you are doing tech field, it offers a very, very unique opportunity for them. Because now you are offering a service for an hourly rate, and yeah, it's very good, especially because you are working with companies that are in UK, US, Australia, etc. And these jobs are not going to anyway. So, in a a very good hourly rate and in a, it was very beneficial kwa especially says we know there's a fluctuation of the dollar after finding this out nearly want to dig a little bit deeper into Upwork and understand how the whole space works and i had a client account ya Upwork my own client account ya Upwork there's a time i was looking for some jobs there's the fanyo kwa Upwork with a freelancer uh, using this client account i entered into Upwork and i looked for talent searched for talent for people who are doing data and uh, I just wanted to see Kenyans who are making actually millions kwa Upwork doing data jobs and tech jobs. And I actually found a lot. Just check this out. So I'll just open Upwork. After opening Upwork, you'll just see hi Nganga. I'll be told to browse for freelancers. And uh, when you check here, you'll realize that this is Nganga Garea, a client account. There's also a freelancer account. So the freelancer account is for looking for jobs. And the Nganga Garea account is for looking for freelancers. Yeah, I was meddling around, that's why I was just checking on it. And then uh, we'll just come look for data here. So basically, I'm searching for talent. And I'll, I will just come and make a couple of changes here. I'm just looking for a person in Kenya. So I'll get country Kenya. And then we want to see the people who have made uh, uh, some money. So we'll just have... an amount and then we'll have 10,000 so 10,000 is uh, a little bit more than is like 1.3 1.4 million Kenyan shillings so we'll put that on and now you can see all these Kenyans that have earned millions just doing data analytics data science jobs all over all this you can see this is $30,000 which is about 4 5 million 10,000 this is another 30,000 another 30,000 this is 60,000. This is something like nine, eight, nine million. Because you see, if you see 60,000, this is between 60 to 70,000. So it might be 65, it can be 69,000. And this Peter, Peter W, you can see, is a data scientist who does data engineering and has data visualization skills. And you can move along and you can see all these Ryongo, you can see all these people who are doing data related jobs. and. After Kucheki Cheki, I landed on this guy called Evans. So after browsing a lot, I stumbled through this guy. His name is Evans K. And uh, he has earned more than 40,000, working 1,722 hours. Uh, time I, first time I checked, it was 1717. So he has been doing his work. And you can see if it's 40,000, I've told you it can be anything between 40 and 50. So it can be anything between 5.96 million to 7 million. In earnings from just 14 jobs and 1,722 hours of work. Now, Evans, I just looked for him on LinkedIn. Nika link up nae very fast. Nika have a phone call with him just to have a conversation. To scare, ni scare to how he has been doing it and uh, how he approaches the whole Upwork thing. And uh, I, uh, because time yake kwa very, very valuable, nika book a meeting with him for 30 minutes. There's something very interesting with Evans. Evans, I make about 6 to 7 million Kenyan shillings in the past 2 3 years working kwa Apple as a data scientist. Ukiangalia vizuri try to break down into a person mwenye na work 8 hours a day, 5 days a week, uni msemo ana earn more than 600,000 Kenyan shillings a month. Though this is just brute mathematics, so I'm using jobs maybe sengine wezi na kosa, sengine zina kuja in influx, but umseme manage to make enough living for himself, especially on these tough economic times. So, uh after I get meeting, I had a conversation with him and this was the conversation. Hope it could idea could get insight on how Upwork works. And I'll be having conversations now say, Kama how and to try to just push you and understand how data science and the tech field 
is very important uh, since you can also venture into the freelance space when you jaribu jaribu yani i hope you enjoy it up here you learn a little bit of something yeah um, i'm good um, yeah uh, and it's good to be here um, yeah. events and um, um a data uh, let's say analyst stock scientist okay uh, i've been working remotely uh, and yeah it's a good experience so far okay. yeah it's yeah it's good to be speaking to you this morning okay uh so oh, yesterday you, you yesterday you got home a little bit late uh, how are the kids uh, did you have fun with them yeah um everyone is fine okay uh, it was a bit hard to get back to the office you know i have a small boy a young boy around two years and two years three months oh okay yeah, around that and and uh, and uh, uh kid also uh, he's just two months old so far mm-hmm. so yeah so he is whenever i get home uh he's so welcoming and wants yeah. to be with him uh, as he watches so yeah. to get to the office becomes a bit tough until maybe he sleeps or have to kind of find an escape plan but Usually the way I do is that every time in the evening I usually hang out with them because it's good to also have that work stroke family balance and yeah yeah, yeah that's what really has to uh, be done definitely 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 yeah that's why when you told me that uh, you need um, um, a little bit of more time with your kids I just said you can do it in the morning and uh, I think the morning is also fine So, so I just have had a couple of questions for you because I was yeah. just looking in the freelance be, be, business. Before even you go into the questions, yeah. maybe I would love to know also uh, you. Yeah, like, okay. I, 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 I just know Nana. Ah, okay, no problem. Uh, <laughs> but I, but yeah, I, I was, uh, I came to see some of your uh, videos okay. uh, in YouTube and TikTok. But I would love to know, like, you talking to me, uh, like, that's first-hand uh, information. Okay. No problem, no problem. So, my name is Nganga Ngaroya. I've been doing the data science thing since around 2015, 2016. Uh, I started by working for the government in the sports sector. So, I was a sports data scientist. We were just making predictions on the, the data that they had. Uh, we came and uh, rearranged all the information that they had made pre- help them understand how predictive analysis is done in the sports sector created machine learning models to understand what influences winning losing drawing and uh, these are the things that we were doing there and uh, later on i moved on i've worked in the real estate space i've worked in the uh, education space agriculture space i've worked in different spaces and i'm um, also a data science instructor I also instruct students and just try to give them as much advice as I can in this data science field because it's a it's a sea of of uh, <laughs> uh, which you can easily drown if you're not very uh, good at trying to understand what you're doing. And uh, I, I was just looking at Upwork. Uh, somebody commented in my in my one of the videos that I had and uh, talked about a little bit about Upwork. Said how Upwork uh, is good for her. she was doing um these virtual assistant jobs and uh, i saw somebody else talk about it as sans they decided just to look at upwork so that people can understand there are so many different avenues data any body with data related can work in so when i went there i had a, an account which i was using to get uh, uh, people to hire people and i went there just looked at uh, data sans uh, in his whole aspect and uh, when i went there i realized that there are data scientists that are working in kenya that are uh, making their uh, uh, their own income very very nicely and they are working from home uh, working on different projects from different people and then i just decided to have a conversation with you 
I got your number there, I went and just looked at LinkedIn to see if I can find you. Then I saw the same picture, then I said, oh, this is nice. That's when I decided just to text you, have a conversation with you, see if you are willing just to talk about the whole uh, freelance bit of the data space. Because I, I have worked with the organizations in the corporate world, but I've never really worked with in the freelance space. And I just wanted to have a second opinion on somebody who is who has done that so that we can just provide information for people and be very helpful for them just to understand how these things work. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, really impressive. Uh, and just out of curiosity, uh, so Apoc, uh, Apoc listed me, like, did it list me uh, when you're trying to cycle data scientists? Were you specific to Kenya? Yes, yes, I was specific to Kenya because I wanted to talk to Kenyans. Uh, talking okay. to Kenyans is way more relatable. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I just decided I want to have a conversation with Kenyans. Mtu mwenye tunaweza ongea na yeye, tuongea na yeye tuelewane. Na na mtu mwingine mwenye a Kenyan, another Kenyan can also have a conversation with you. Mwenye yeah. uh, another Kenyan can also get this conversation and understand oh kwa hivyo there's free there's the freelance space oh so there's upwork oh so this upwork thing yeah. is not uh, what i usually hear it's uh, it's uh, xyz does not work etc etc so just giving them a general understanding of how all this uh, relates to the whole data field okay yeah yeah uh, that's nice yeah thank you thank you uh, I, uh it's impressive uh, w- what i saw there and uh, i think we should just get on to some of the questions that i have uh my the first question that i had was uh how did you discover upwork and uh, what types of jobs do you do there uh yeah um okay so this goes back to when i was in campus uh, that was around 2017 uh and that time I was pitch broke, I was so broke. <laughs> uh, sometimes I would have to miss lunch because I don't have the cash. So uh, while thinking through, um, I uh, tried, like I tried to kind of search, of, uh, search uh, on what, like just do a search on things I can maybe do uh, while uh, studying. And the first thing was like, you can try and find something online. Uh, so I'm working and maybe later during the day I can uh, go and attend uh, maybe some lesson. So while doing my search, uh, then I came across a book. Uh, that was around 2017. Then I made an account with them. Um, but the problem was that uh, uh, I didn't really give my uh, po- profile and portfolio some good description. So you'd find that um, in my description, I'm just saying I will give you quality work and that's all. Um, and yeah, so that's when I um, that's when I set up, that's when I knew about Upwork. Uh, and then, so um the types of jobs uh i had started with like when while, while i was creating my account uh because that time i hadn't even uh, gotten into the technical bit of data analysis yeah so i was comfortable to work on at the moment and so i was uh I'd registered for article writing uh technical writing but the third thing, I actually didn't get a job like for 2017, 2018, up until 2020, uh, I, I, I was like, I decided to give it another trial. Um, and it's because that uh, what, when I was working for the government, it was an internship that was uh, a one internship and it was about to to end a way to keep myself busy and that's when I also uh, I had to rethink and give the online thing another uh, a go uh, so since then 2020 mm. 
that's when I've been, I would say I've been seriously in up work. Uh, and it started because uh, I actually took around two months to just uh, develop or build my own portfolio on Upwork months, uh, trying to assemble uh, all the things, uh, um, like all the services or what I offer, uh, also making sure that uh, I have a good portfolio and it also includes uh, getting some side projects or everything in there. So since 2020, uh, what I've been working with uh, has been on data like that data field so you find that i'm doing that extraction that analysis using python to build um, maybe dashboards um, yeah so it's been around data data cleaning and everything else oh that is uh, very nice yeah. that is very nice events that was a very comprehensive answer yeah. so you can say you created the account around 2017 but the real work in the data space started around 2020 Oh, yeah, so it's because okay. uh, in 2017, um, uh, I didn't give a good description about what I was going to offer. Okay. Um, it was and it was all things to do with writing those translation, and I actually didn't get my account approved. I got it approved uh, in 2020 when I came uh, and gave it more attention, like I. I dedicated around two months to just build the entire thing. So that's when I got approved. But 2017, I never got approved. That's why I couldn't even apply mm -hmm. for anything because that's how our book works. You submit your um, profile or portfolio mm -hmm. for approval. So I think they have their own uh, technicians or their own um, personnel that will just go through uh, maybe each or these they should be a, maybe a developed AI thing that goes through each account that's being uh, developed or built and tries to see if it meets all the necessary uh, criteria for it to be approved. So I was approved in 2020. Oh, perfect. Uh, I think you've also yeah. answered the next question that I, I was uh, going to ask, which is very nice, which was just uh, how long yeah. have you been doing the jobs in Upwork? Uh, so, uh, in your experience, what is the most interesting job that you have ever done for any client? What do you think is the most interesting one? Uh, so, um, uh, the way uh, I've been surviving on Upwork is that uh, I try to apply for any job as long as I have this little idea on how it can be done. So I don't have to know how to do it fully. So like my first job, um, I remember uh, the first time I got an up job was uh, 2020 Christmas. Uh, and it's, uh, so this person, uh, this client wanted me to build them uh, a data extraction, like uh, he, he was looking to extract data from farmers uh, so we, we were to build a form like that farmers were going to fill in so that we can analyze the data later. Mm. So this was something that was going to require some JavaScript skills. And totally, I was blank in JavaScript. <laughs> I didn't know anything at all. Uh, <laughs> but I knew HTML and CSS. So uh, I, I told him that uh, I was going to do that for him because the, the good thing was that the next project that was going to come after that was a bit interesting because it was to, to do the analysis itself. So oh. I was focusing on the next thing. Okay. But I, 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 I had to kind of Google stuff to get things <laughs> working. Uh, hmm. And I survived actually. So uh, I built a good <laughs> form. Uh, it was able to submit. Uh, so that's, uh, that's what I'm saying is that uh, um, I usually don't have to have uh, the prior knowledge of anything to be able to to apply for a job. So uh, on that, there was this time uh, around 2021, 20, towards the end. So there's this client uh, who wanted me to uh, build 
Boke dashboard uh, for them. And uh, what I know is that <laughs> the best oh, I knew. Excuse <laughs> best I, Fine. The best I knew uh, on dashboards was Plotly. I didn't know Boke mm. at all. Mm-hmm. Um, so I told them that I'm able to, I'll be able to build you uh, the dashboard uh, because I have this experience about it. Uh, and yeah, so we talked and he enjoyed me and then I started uh, helping him out on that dashboard and it's interesting because uh, that was the first, like, uh, it, le- it, it led to uh, to like a long-term contract, like okay. now these, these, like I'm working for them at the moment. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it led to something long term because yeah, I was able to get things up, and yeah, it was yeah, I, it was interesting to work with them. So they decided to uh, give me a long term contract, and yeah, I'm, I'm working with them at the moment. So like I can say they're my, they're my employer. Oh, that is amazing. That is very amazing. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, we have understood how the how you are supposed to uh, take the job, even though you're not quite sure how it's it's going, how it's supposed to go. You can Google stuff. There's Chat GPT now. You can go and try and understand how everything is supposed to be done, and then uh, never say no to any job. That's what I've gotten from that, and uh, make sure that you try and deliver in the specific yeah. job that you're being given, and uh, yeah. yeah. So we have understood uh, how. To work but now we need to know what is the best way to set up your up up work account to get your first client especially in the data field okay um yeah um as we've been talking uh i mentioned to you that uh at first when i was trying to set up my account uh i didn't give it a good focus i didn't give it that much uh, attention. So you find that I had uh, described my uh, services or what I offer. Um, I didn't give it a good description. So uh, the first thing uh, that is really important uh, is to the way you create your account, uh, and that is like what are you? What are you including in those details? And what services are you uh, including? in your portfolio because um uh the first time or like the, the, the other time was now uh, setting up the the profile or my upper profile i was uh using like i was comparing it against those uh, who uh, like are making or are able to convince uh, like clients so uh the first thing is you make sure that you can describe your uh, your services and what you do very well. That's the first thing, and that's uh, it. Also includes the portfolio, and the portfolio is uh, the projects that you may have done along the way. And since you are a data data, you are in, into the data field. To be able to have some side projects, it doesn't have to be real projects, you have to have some side projects. And if you have those, then can, you should be able to uh, include them in your portfolio. Um, the other thing um, is um, whenever you're applying for a job uh, on Upwork, um, sometimes uh, Upwork lets you see the number of proposals that have been made so far. And it's a very important thing because you don't want to waste your time applying to things or to jobs that uh, are already are full uh, of proposals. Uh, what I know is that clients don't have all the time to be looking at each of those proposals. So if you find uh, a job that has been posted maybe some few minutes or some few hours ago and it has, and let's say it has less than five proposals, uh, that would be one of the best uh, jobs to apply to uh, because uh, the client is able to 
um, if they are able to, 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 to go through the applications that have been made, uh, there's a high chance they will look at yours. And if you uh, were able to write a good one, then uh, you would expect some message from them. Um, uh, the other thing uh, is that... Um, yeah so the other thing is that um, when you are applying for a job mm -hmm. uh, make sure that you can personalize that uh, proposal very well uh, do not use uh, do not reuse proposals that you had used to apply for because um, when you personalize it there's a way that you are able to kind of um, describe what you want like what you want to offer uh, that energy can be felt by the client so if you keep on reusing things that you had used previously it will look a bit uh, general and So uh, you got lost a little bit, but uh, uh, you were saying that you should not reuse the proposals that you use for other jobs and uh, reuse them for other jobs. And you said uh, uh, generally you should try and change it up and uh, make it specific to the specific uh, job or contract you're trying to seek at the specific moment. Yeah, true, true. Uh, that is uh, very, very informative. Thank you. Uh, my other question was, uh, still on that was... Uh, you said you can do side projects. These projects don't really have to be in Upwork. It can be just projects on uh, outside projects uh, where you have uh, done something not inside Upwork, but up outside, then you can put it inside as a project that you have done. Yeah, yeah, because uh, you, when you're talking about starting or setting up an account, uh, it means that uh, you're coming from somewhere, like you haven't like you there's some experience you're coming in with even if it's uh, uh the least or if it's minimum there's something you have done before or while you are learning there are some things you are building right yeah so those are things that you should be able to include into this because uh, Apple and any other online platform these are competitive environment you want the least possible energy to convince a client that you can be able to get the job done and you can be able to give out a quality work so if you have those side projects um, um, the way you did them um, how you did them really matters and those are things you should be able to include them in your portfolio because uh, you get more more uh, chance of get, getting the job uh, if uh, the client knows that you have been able to do this, you've accomplished this, uh, that needed these specific uh, skills, the, the analytical mindset and yeah, and everything else. Oh, that is amazing. So basically, this means that a person's portfolio is very important. If you are doing, if you are in the data field, doing data analysis, data science, your portfolio should have uh, projects that you have done during a run, sorry, during a learning process that are very explanatory, self-explanatory. If a person just looks at them, understands what this person has specifically been doing, and that this person is very good at what he does, and uh, he's viable to be selected for the job that is being uh, pushed out there in Upwork. And uh, another final yeah. question in that specific realm of the projects and the portfolio: How many projects did you have? yourself while you're going into Upwork and uh, what were the type of projects that you had? Um, yeah, uh, I think I had around three or four uh, and mostly the projects that I, uh, mostly the projects that I got into Upwork with were GIS related. Um, back in campus, I studied uh, 
uh, Bachelor of Science in uh, Special Information Science and Remote Sensing. Okay. Um, and yeah, that is the kind of that's the the experience or the the skills that I was getting up into Upwork with. Uh, and I had around three or four of them um, that I started with, and there was nothing really uh, on. Uh, data like okay GIS also involves data but it's the special data that uh, GIS deals with but uh, on these other the data non special data um, I didn't have anything on that uh, it's something that I developed uh, along the Got it lost again. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I think my internet is having a little bit of a problem. But uh, what I have heard is that you are doing. You've said Bachelor of Science in Geospatial, Information Science and Remote Sensing. Oh, and Remote Sensing. Okay. So yeah, uh, I've heard that you're doing Geospatial. Uh, you're doing Bachelor of Science in Geospatial Science and Remote Sensing. And uh, since it did not involve a lot of data, you really had to uh, create a, uh, projects, three to four projects that you went into Upwork with. And these projects basically yeah. dealt with data analysis and uh, uh, creation of dashboards. Okay, uh, what I was saying is that uh, while I was uh, going into Upwork, I went to the GIS. Uh, projects okay. and yeah, it it involves a bit of just maps. Okay. Uh, trying to get yeah maps. Maybe uh, there's some things you are trying to analyze, but it's the map uh, the map context. But uh, and then uh, along the way, mm -hmm. uh, because there was some uh, along the way, I was also learning Python um, and building on projects because my next project was uh, extracting data from a stock website and visualizing oh, okay. it on uh, uh, like high charts um, dashboard. So now that it, it got to a bit where it, it became more of uh, the, da the data like outside the spatial context okay, okay. more of the data in a spatial context. So that's when I, uh, I started uh, I also I was also learning uh, more Python and data science at that moment, um, and that's when I started to build more of uh, data related projects and also I started updating my Upwork uh, portfolio because okay. your 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 skills and uh, experience uh, should be improving over time and it should also be reflected on your Upwork. Uh, portfolio so that's when I also started updating it and yeah 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 I keep on updating it like okay because I'm learning a lot of things that is uh, that is amazing that is amazing Evans uh, that question was very well answered uh, yeah. and uh, what are the main advantages and uh, disadvantages of working in Upwork you can just start with the advantages yeah, okay. Okay. Um, the advantages of working uh, in Upwork, uh, I'll just, just make it like it's uh, advantages of working remotely. Uh, and um, the first one is you can work anytime and you can work anywhere. Um, because for me, I don't have to be uh, strictly in Nairobi to be able to work. I can go to Mombasa, can go mm, to the yeah. <laughs> to the beach if I want to, yes. and work from there. Mm. So that's the good thing with uh, working remotely or working from Upwork. You can work anywhere and you can work anytime. And the other thing is that uh, you get uh, to be paid handsomely uh, because you are um, you you are like you have this access to. Uh, a better or a more improved uh, 
parents. So if you get a client, let's say from the UK or from the US or those other developed nations, uh, and their rates there they are a bit high, so you get to be paid better. Okay. Um, the other thing is that uh, when you are paid when you are paid in dollars. Uh, Imagine that every month, what you get every month is not the same as what you got last month. Yeah, so yeah. The dollar, the dollar keeps on, keeps on uh, getting stronger and stronger. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So imagine uh, you get to receive like more, more, more money. Maybe it could be an excess of ten k every month or something like. Uh, it's a good. It's like it also increases your motivation because okay. you know that uh, there's this. Um, economical uh, gain that you get because of those uh, exchanges, exchange rates. So yeah. it, it gives you that motivation. You also you have uh, more personal time because you can you 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 don't let's say for a physical job you'll have to be going to the the job. Yeah. Uh, and along the way there could be traffic. Yeah. Um, and you may spend too much time on traffic, and that is the time you could be using to maybe increase your uh, skill set or get more things done and everything else. So in that, you are just increasing your productivity. You have more personal time, and yeah, yeah, those are. I think those are the advantages I I get oh. so far. <laughs> that is amazing. That is amazing. Uh, yeah. In every job, there's also some disadvantages that uh, come with it. And uh, yeah. what do you think are the disadvantages that come with Upwork? Um, uh, some of the disadvantages, I would say, uh, is that uh, now when you're, when you're working from home, you kind of uh, limit that social interaction with people. Okay. So you are a bit isolated from the real, real world because... Uh, you are working daily from your office, so you get to uh, you don't get to see the outside world uh, quite often, mm. unless you you go out later in the evening. But I'm saying that let's say uh, if you are going to compare someone who is in the physical job and who is in the remote job, uh, the one in the physical one gets a bit more interactions like they are able to to see other people like there's that more uh, social interaction but for you your social interaction is a bit uh, down so yeah. you are uh, kind of isolated from the real real world yeah. uh, the other thing is that um, working from home uh, sometimes you get to sit so for so long uh, <laughs> you sometimes you can just have back <laughs> Back, back problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe eye strains because you've mm. been too much on your computer and uh, yeah, for the, those negative health effects on you. Um, the other thing is that uh, you 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 may not be able to get that direct recognition or feedback from uh, your supervisor or your those people in the managerial posts because you kind of depend for a response you are waiting for a response and uh, with time maybe they may not be able to get back to you or yeah like in comparison to a physical job where uh, you do you can have a set with them yeah and they are able you, to get you can just knock you you can just knock their office yeah. door, then enter and have a conversation yeah. with them. True, true. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but for this one, you may have to set up meetings. You have to do this, uh, which takes time also, mm. and that that's when maybe the feedback thing or the recognition can be uh, totally ignored. Um, also, frequent meetings and video calls, uh, it can be tiresome sometimes. And yeah, yeah, you can imagine if I have a whole day of meetings. And that kind of stress that can it can get me, and um, I do see that uh, you have um, a microphone and things like that. So imagine the cost of setting up yeah. your home office. Yeah, 
the furniture, the Wi-Fi, a stable connection, all those things. Uh, yeah, which not... which could have been available at the job uh, uh, if yeah. you are going to an office of uh, of a specific employer. The Wi-Fi is provided, the seats, everything. Now you have to buy everything for yourself. Yeah, you don't have to strain, so you just have to come maybe with. You just have to be there because even the laptop can yeah. be provided. But for you, you have to to get your own things to be able to to work comfortably from home. And also, when you're working from home, um, there could be distractions, so yeah. you can't. You may not have that optimum uh, focus to be able to get things done. So, yeah, those are some of the disadvantages you can get. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and I know, yeah. uh, but since I think since you've been doing it for a very long time, you've learned how to curb the disadvantages. Already you have a desk set up. These uh, things that you don't need to keep on buying. You have your own laptop. You have your everything. Yeah. And uh, you've learned how to communicate better and better with the class that you have. And you've learned that uh, the key to communications and everything, all these different setbacks and milestones, you have understood how to uh, bypass them. Yeah, that, uh, that is amazing. Yeah. Um... So you can actually know and relate to uh, me being on traffic yesterday is because sometimes I have to go out because I sometimes working from home, uh, it can be a bit tiresome. Yeah. Uh, so I need to kind of change my environment a bit uh, so I can also get uh, uh, maybe become a bit more creative and also feel a bit motivated to work. So. I constantly sometimes have to go out to an outdoor office to yeah to be able to just balance. Uh, that is a very amazing insight. Uh, I think yeah. I think uh, the last question that we had was about what you studied in campus, and you already talked about uh, the geospatial, and uh, 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 and you said about also remote sensing, etc. But uh, the second part of this final question was. Uh, uh, what additional information did you learn? Have to learn to get at, uh, good at what you did. But I think you already talked about Python and uh, also learning how to the job that you talked about, the JavaScript job that involved creating forms. And uh, after you created the forms, you had to know how to do the data analysis. And I think you used Python. And uh, uh, all this means that you have to be in constant learning. You have to always constantly learn new skills that are applicable in the field that you are in. And I think uh, that was very good insight from you, Evans. Uh, where specifically do you learn these specific uh, skills that you, additional skills that you had to learn to cope with the specific job that you're usually doing? Um, I can start from where I actually I learned uh, Python from. Uh, Python I learned uh, uh, during uh, the corona period, that is 2020. And uh, as I said, I was uh, doing uh, the government internship. There was this, there were these, there are these internships, the one year internship things. Um, so that's when I was learning Python because I was trying to project myself into the next few uh, months, and I was uh, trying to figure out how I was going to survive because it was coming to an end. And uh, back then, I was uh, using YouTube to learn things. Okay. And that is very because yeah. Python I learned it like entirely yeah from YouTube. Uh, so I think Moshe Medan some yeah Moshe Medan that's uh that's the 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 the, the, the tutorial I used to learn Python. Oh the uh, the bald I, the bald guy. Yeah yeah yeah. Ah that guy is very amazing. <laughs> Uh, shout out to Mosh, shout out to Mosh. I also have a, a, a machine learning engineer who is working in the for a, a US company who got employed in yeah. a US company who who really uh, uh, likes Mosh. And I have also I also started learning uh, Python through Mosh. Uh, yeah. And uh, also, but I also had to combine a lot of other people. But he was one of the main people that I I learned from. And how do yeah, you cope yeah. with this, uh, the sea of information on YouTube and uh, how, ma how much it is and how big of an ocean of information YouTube is which can lead to you drowning? Yeah. You said how do I cope? 
how do you how did you cope uh, when you are trying to learn python there are so many tutorials from so many different people and you can start learning python from somebody who is going towards uh, teaching web development and uh, 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 Django, and then there's a, somebody yeah. else who's just teaching basics somebody else is teaching data yeah. science somebody there's so much information there how do you yeah. how did you uh, specifically deal with this issue yeah uh, it's very common to come across such so i remember uh, i was kind of trying to find the, uh, the like i was trying to find them them the most relevant one for my case uh, and it uh, turns out I had a couple of uh, considerations. I remember there was one uh, on Edureka or something. There was quite a couple of uh, tutorials to take from. So what I did is that I would go to the, um, the overview. I think there's where someone lists uh, their topics or uh, what they are going to, to teach. So I would uh, take it uh, one by one, look at uh, the kind of projects they are doing, uh, like the kind of roadmap they are trying to offer. Is it web development? Is it into data science? Is it machine learning? And now that's when I got a bit more informed on which way to or which tutorial to, to take. Yeah, so it was basically just trying to look at what they are, they are, they are offering and also how is it because sometimes it's very important to to consider how like that person is delivering their their content. Yeah, and Nana, uh, that was twenty twenty. I was using YouTube tutorials, but along the way, mm -hmm. um, I started to kind of uh, acknowledge um, uh, the use of courses themselves like those courses that can give you a certifications so okay. that's when i went into so I, data science i used a simply learn if you've heard of simply learn yes yes uh, simply learn yeah it was free for that time it was free it gives you i think 90 days a period where you it's free for 90 days after that you have to pay so uh, that's when uh, i used it to learn and that's where I learned, I learned uh, the data science thing uh, and nowadays I use a mix of Udemy and Codecademy those are the two um, um, I mostly use Udemy and Codecademy oh that is that is amazing events because uh, uh, having a, a, a structured course is way better uh, that's from also my experience yeah. I, having a yeah. course from a person who is offering a, a course a structured course that has everything that uh, you need from the beginning to the end is very nice. This is something I also yeah. did. Uh, yeah. I'm a little bit like a home again in a in a in a super kiasi lakini. This is something here. Yeah, this is something that I think is uh, is very important to have a person who has gives you a specific structure to learn, and then. Yeah project-based learning where you learn but you don't just learn and put it in your head you try and work on it create projects create projects create projects and you can break uh, using these projects you can put it on your portfolio especially for people who don't have any experience uh put these specific projects on their portfolio to get uh, a gain on on somebody who does not have experience and doesn't have projects you can have five projects that you have done a python uh, created a dashboard in python that do done some data analysis maybe done some machine learning model creation etc etc and all these projects for a person who is beginning i think i think are very very important for them and uh working with a structured course and having project based learning is very important you learn you do a project you learn you do a project and by doing the project you realize all the problems that might be in this uh, in whatever you're learning all the information gaps that you have because you might think you know then when you're doing a project you realize oh there's a very big information gap here you go back to the course understand it again come back and fill this gap then continue and, and continue and continue i think this was a very productive session evans uh thank you very much for your time you are very, a very good person for just accepting this and giving this knowledge out for people so that they can understand how they can uh, use the skills that they learn to try and earn a living from it. And since the solutions, uh, since the valuation of a person is directly proportional to the solutions that they provide, I think it's very important for people to understand that it's just about providing solutions. Providing solutions yeah. for people, solving their problems, 
if they want x to be done you make sure you do x and if they want x y z to be done and you don't know y and z you say you can do it then you go and learn how to do y and z and then make sure that you deliver yeah any that's final true, that's yeah true. yeah and um, um uh, actually i think uh, i had wanted uh, to kind of um develop some blogs uh, like articles on how to kind of just um, position yourself uh, so you can be able to uh, get these jobs and i think i'll now be uh, giving it more uh, focus yeah uh, so that uh, we are able to help more people uh, yeah. because it's good yeah, if some like if everyone of us has something to kind of work on so yeah yeah i'll, I'll work on that yeah, so that the, the youth, the general population, the young people can understand there is work in the freelance sector, on Upwork, on things like Fiverr, so that they can know that yeah. it's not just about crying to the government, oh, it's idea apa, serikali, it's idea apa. Yeah. You can also uh, take the fate into your own hands. And even if you're not a technical person or you're not into the data field, maybe you are in the in the software field there's also work for people in the software field there there's also work for people who are more not more technical and can do things like virtual assistants and they can do yeah. uh, maybe graphics design make sure that you have a good pro portfolio then go and try and once you get your first client you do the, your best the first client will be the, like a referral for other clients yeah 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 and actually while you are starting out you really don't have to give uh don't be too fixed on the prices. Just do anything that can be done. Uh, because here you are just trying to hunt for better reviews and uh, better rating. Because if you can be rated better, it means even uh, uh, with Google searches or any web search, uh, you are guaranteed that you'll be appearing on the top. So while you're starting out, don't uh, be too much fixed on the prices just do anything that can be done to help mm -hmm. you uh, get up from that ground oh, thank you very much uh thank you very much evans uh you are of so much help uh you're the first person i've talked to on upwork and uh yeah. i have uh, i have another two people that i'm supposed to talk to but i think the insight that you're provided will be almost similar to them but i think theirs will be specific to what they do and i yeah. think uh, that was very very amazing of you to take your time about one hour of your time just to have a conversation to help people understand how to work with Upwork, how to how the freelance space is uh, is and how the freelance space you can uh, penetrate the e freelance space and uh thank you very much i think uh will not take more any more of your time i uh, will just tell you thank you once again and uh say hi to the kids uh, just wave to them, say that uh, Uncle Nganga has just waved to them because of, uh, okay. yeah. And, uh, yeah, any final remarks? And if you don't have any, you can just end the meeting and uh, we can ha keep in constant conversation on WhatsApp and through phone calls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to say that uh, thank, thank you for inviting me to this uh, uh, chat. Uh, it's been so... Um, like I am so happy to kind of give my experiences and try to help people out there because at the end of the day, uh, it's that's what is humanity because we should be able to help others. Yeah, so I'm so happy uh, that uh, we've, we've uh, got to chat and, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to more. communication and, and try to kind of think of other things to uh, to or other ways to help people yeah hi sasa so, so, thank you very much uh adios enjoy the rest of your day i'll just end the meeting there and uh peace hope actually we have a new and drop gems on gems on gems now it's very helpful for you to understand when you never approach this space if you have any other questions you can in the comment section to see if God uh, comes as a core answer. Until then, thank you very much for watching this video. Peace to you next time.